Imagine going from creating the most insane attacking trio on the continent to winning the Champions League three times in a row. Prime Real Madrid was unmatched. It gets even crazier when you realize this was a team that took over 20 years in the making. This one goes back to the early 2000s. Real Madrid was trying to stamp their authority as the biggest team in the continent. And just a few years into his tenure as president, Florentino Perez introduced a brand that would change the game. The Galacticos. The idea behind this was to sign the best players in the world and get them to play for Madrid. So they got guys like Zidane from Juventus for a world record fee of 77.5 million. Ronaldo Nazario from Inter Milan for 40 million. Got Beckham from Manchester United two years later for 37.5 million. And perhaps the most controversial one was this guy. Luis Figo from their arch rivals Barcelona. The signings did work out. Madrid won the Champions League in 2002 and a couple of league titles later on. But as the years progressed, these guys left. And the dudes that followed after didn't quite have the magic they did. From 2005 to 2010, they got knocked out of the Champions League in the round of 16 stage five years in a row. The managerial changes didn't help too. Guys like Fabio Capello and Manuel Pellegrini came in, but didn't do much until the summer of 2010, when Florentino Perez struck again. And this time, he went for broke. One year earlier, they had the most insane transfer window in the club's history. The Galactic Ghost 2.0, Cristiano Ronaldo from Manchester United for 80 million. And in the same window, they they got the 2007 Ballon d'Or winner Kaka from AC Milan. Karim Benzema from Lyon. Gonzalo Higuain came in too. And the squad was stacked. One year on, and Perez knew to get the best out of a team like this. He'd need a serial winner. Someone who'd gotten an insane track record of winning against the odds. And that's when this guy came in. Jose Mourinho, Champions League winner with Porto in 2004, back-to-back -back Premier League titles with Chelsea two years later, and in 2010, he won the treble with Inter Milan. Mourinho's first season at Madrid didn't quite go according to plan. In his biggest game of this season, they got beat 5-0 by Barcelona and got knocked out of the Champions League by the same team. They did manage to win the Copa del Rey later, though. And I guess that served as motivation coming into the new season. Because in 2012, Madrid hit another gear and completely took over. Winning the league doesn't even tell half the story. They completely shattered records on the way. They got 100 points that season. At the time, a La Liga record. And scored 121 goals in the league too. Another La Liga record. Won the competition with four games to play. With Ronaldo on form and players like Mesut Ozil pulling the strings. This team should have been peak Real Madrid. But in the Champions League, they agonizingly got knocked out in the semis. Losing to Bayern Munich at home on pens. And that night, Mourinho himself himself admitted it was the most painful defeat of his career, and it set the stage for the next years to come. At the end of 2013, Mourinho was ready to leave. The special one wanted to go back to Chelsea, and in turn, Madrid got Carlo Ancelotti from PSG as the new coach, and Don Carlo delivered the big one. La Decima, a first Champions League title since 2002, and they did it in style too. Ronaldo hit an all-time high in the competition with 17 goals that season, including scoring in the final. So did their record signing Gareth Bale. But on the whole, Madrid lost out on the league to city rivals at Letigo Madrid. And in the following season, they watched on as Barcelona hit a second treble in six years. Madrid needed a reaction. And that's what all of this has been building up to. Because in the summer of 2015, peak Real Madrid was underway. That summer, there was a new man at the dugout. Actually, a club legend. Zidane had taken up the role of head coach at the club. 
and his first assignment was taking Madrid back to the peak. Barca won the league that season, but in the Champions League, it was Madrid's competition. They somehow found a way. In the quarterfinals against Wolfsburg, they looked dead and buried after a 2-0 defeat in Germany. But in the second leg, Cristiano Ronaldo stole the show with a hat-trick to seal a 3-2 comeback. They beat Man City 1-0 on aggregate in the semis. And in the final against City rivals Atletico Madrid, the second one in three years, it was decided on pets. And Ronaldo made sure this one ended up in the city of Madrid. Another Champions League title. Impressive. 2016-17 now. And under Zidane, Madrid now had a recognizable core. See, in 2015, their rivals Barcelona had created an attacking force known as the MSN, with Messi, Neymar, and Suarez. And in return, Madrid responded with their own attacking trio, Karim Benzema, Gareth Bale, and Cristiano Ronaldo. In midfield, there was no mistaking it. Luka Modric, Tony Cruz, and Casemiro at the base. At the back, Captain Sergio Ramos and Rafael Varane formed the center back partnership. With Marcelo at left back and Carvajal at right back, Madrid's golden team. Winning the Champions League was great, but now Zidane wanted to conquer home turf once again. That was the mission. See, they didn't just win, they dominated too, and hit another set of records along the way. To start the season, Madrid won the UEFA Super Cup, beating Sevilla in the final. Attention shifted back to the league, and Zidane shut his critics up. Going back to 2016, someone said he was just lucky. He couldn't do it in domestic competitions, but by the end of the campaign, there was no goalkeeper who kept a clean sheet against them. They scored in every game in the competition. And despite an El Clasico defeat to take it to the final day, with the pressure on, Madrid came big to win 3-0 at Malaga and secure a first league title since 2012. In Europe, they once again made history. Back-to-back -back Champions League titles. The first team in the modern Champions League era to do so. Madrid faced the best that season and came out top. Ronaldo stole the show too. He bagged hat-tricks in back-to-back -back Champions League knockout games against Atletico Madrid and Bayern Munich and scored a brace in the final against Juventus. Madrid ran out 4-1 winners on the night and cemented their place in history. There's no way they'd have been able to do it again, right? Three in a row! 2017-18 now, and the core of the Madrid team was still the same. They lost out on the league to Barca, but in Europe, Los Blancos were kings. A third Champions League title. Ronaldo was the Champions League top scorer for the third season in a row. Tony Cruz, Luka Modric, and Casemiro outplayed European teams in the competition. And a backline that quite simply never gave up peak football. The truth is, Real Madrid's 3 P Champions League team felt like a cheat code. The football hack. The amount of talent in the team was insane. In every position, they had depth. When guys like Ronaldo and Benzema weren't playing, they could switch it up to players like Isco, Marco Asensio, Mateo Kovacic, and Lucas Vazquez. The Madrid DNA went hard, and the attacking football they put on was breathtaking. After 2018, it went downhill for a bit. Ronaldo shocked the world and joined Juventus to become Madrid's record transfer sale. Zidane left as head coach in the same window, and in the season that followed, Madrid failed to win a single trophy. Awful. It's 2024 now, and it looks like a Galactico 3.0 is about to kick off in the Bernabeu. Madrid is stacked. Vinicius Jr. has been in the form of his career since 2021, scoring the winning goal in the Champions League final of 2022 and another Champions League final goal weeks back. Add that to a young core of Rodrigo Goez, Eduardo Camavinga, Jude Bellingham, Federico Valverde, Arda Goulart, and Brahim Diaz. And Madrid are all set to dominate for the best decade, especially after signing this guy. 
They finally did it! With Mbappe now, Madrid looks stronger than ever. And who knows? Maybe he could be the missing piece to Madrid becoming an even more formidable force in Europe. It's all set for the future. But for now, until these guys do it consistently at least, it's going to be pretty hard to beat that three-peat team of 2016 to 2018. Legends who play football and subscribe